Communication is always most important in business. And being able to communicate in person, we know is important. We've been doing that for centuries. Now we're moving into an online world and communicating via video with tools like Skype, Google Plus Hangouts, Zoom, and many others are very important. It's important for you in your work to get a competitive advantage to know how to do this. And so you are in for a wonderful surprise and treat today as we are joined by a person who really knows both sides of that. Her name is Patricia Fripp, and she is joining us now from her offices there in San Francisco. Patricia, good to have you with us today. Always great to be with you, Terry Brock, in person or virtually. Well, now, for those that haven't met you, I think there's one or two people on the planet that don't know about you and who you are, what you've done. Of course, you've been a past president of the National Speakers Association. You have this title of Certified Speaking Professional, which is an earned designation. You've worked on that. You're also a member of the Speaker Hall of Fame, and you are a past president of that organization. In addition to that, you have won their highest award of the Cabot, which is one they give for a lifetime achievement. And you've done many, many more uh, achievements in speaking. Tell us a little bit more about who you are and your background in speaking and in coaching. It's very impressive, Terry, when someone like you reads out all the credentials, of which they're all true. However, what would probably be more interesting is to go back to the beginning. Because when I arrived in America at 20, with nowhere to live, no contacts, $500, and just with the impression that everyone in America was rich and the streets were paved with movie stars, I was a hairstylist. And what happened, once I became a men's hairstylist, which I was 23 years old, and soon after, I started traveling nationwide for a hair product company, speaking to hairstylists. I was speaking to Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis Clubs because all my executives, like you, when you had hair, said, oh, Patricia, if you're speaking to hairstylists, come speak to my Rotary Club. And I discovered what many National Speakers Association members learned early on is that there is no better way to promote your business as an entrepreneur, even if you're not a professional speaker, than taking advantage of the opportunity to speak for service clubs and meetings in the community. Yes. What people don't realize, Terry, is the toughest job of any club is being program chair. How do you get a free speaker who is halfway decent next Thursday? And that's if right. that's you, no matter what your business is, you have a competitive edge. So all the credentials you mentioned really started when a young hairstylist took advantage of the opportunities and took Dale Carnegie and Toastmasters and then went to NSA. We would probably both agree, Terry, that good presentation skills are no longer a nice skill to have. It's a matter of business life and death. Absolutely. It's so important. And we've known that for years, that if you want to get ahead, you need to master the skill of speaking clearly, succinctly, simply, rather than trying to confuse the message, make sure that people understand what you're saying. And you have helped people with that. I know you do a lot of coaching, helping people and executives particularly. Let me ask you this. If we look at speaking in person, speaking to a group of people, or speaking online using communication, what are some of the key principles that we need to keep in mind, regardless of the medium that we're deploying? And you're absolutely right, Terry. Many of the core principles were one-on-one, -on -one, virtually, and in-person. And if you were to say, Fripp, what are your five best techniques? It would be one, you need to start the conversation or presentation well. Don't waffle around, get to the point fast. Two, you need to structure the outline, the flow of the conversation or presentation. Three, you need to emotionally connect to your audience. You understand this is all about your audience. It's not about you. And that way we use you focus conversations and language. One, and we both know whether it's a technology meeting or a presentation, stories and examples are a best way to 
simplify the complex or help our audience see and understand what we're saying. And then I would add razor sharp specificity. Mm. Specificity builds credibility. So they are the five principles, however we present. Yes, I think that's most important to remember those because we, even though we're bringing in new technology all the time, it's wonderful. You and I experience this ourselves in working with Google Plus Hangouts and now working with Zoom and working with all of them, finding there's different tools for different uh, types of purposes and different uh, objects, that, you know, objectives that we have to accomplish. But yet there's certain principles that are there that are important and we need to know. Well, let me ask you this. You've seen a lot of people presenting. You give instructions to people when they've got that very important speech. You're one of the best anywhere to help people craft and mold that message and put it together. What do you see are differences between the offline presentation and the online presentation? You, again, using tools like Skype, Google Plus Hangouts, and uh, Zoom and others that will be out there. What are some of the key principles we need to be aware of when we're moving between those two types of presentation style? Most individuals are a lot more comfortable when they can reach out, shake hands, and look at somebody. The first lesson, and fortunately, I learned this a while ago from, from Bob Chesney. We were creating products and, of course, promos for the website. You have to get comfortable looking at the camera and imagining this is a real person. It, and, and I was just part of a... 22 person webinar series where we record them in Skype, they edit them, make look the beautiful and, and send out the replays. And they all said to me, your office, your background, your setting is better than everybody else's. Mm. So one, if you are going to communicate virtually, you have to understand people are coming into your office, they're coming into your home. So with me, just as, on a stage, use the best you can to set a stage. Now, I assure you, I have the piles of projects and the to-do lives and the piles of mail and builders pay, but I push everything out of the way. And whereas many people believe this is my window with the Golden Gate Bridge, to which I like to say, if it really was, my house would be worth $2 million more than it is. Yeah. This is a, a poster. My assistant, Harold, is a photographer. This is an original photograph printed at Kinko's on a board. So it's clear. Or you, I, I coach some people and once they've seen mine, they just get a screen to put behind them and mm -hmm. perhaps that logoing for their business. But create the environment and look into the camera. So although I can see you, Terry, in below my eye level, I'm actually looking for the people who might be watching this. Very important to do that. And of course, with virtual meetings, and believe me, you taught me how to use my webinar jam, full credit, I'm a slow learner, I need someone to hold my hand. You, you can tape any notes that you have on, behind you I have two screens, so I use my other screen to put any notes I want. And when in doubt, like any other presentation, rehearse. Yes. If you have a high, a, a high pressure, very important virtual meeting and you're not used to it with a prospect or a client, have a rehearsal with your pals, your friends or the people in your office. So it's never the first time. And just as with all presentations. Yes, absolutely. Michael Kane said, rehearsal is the work. Performance is the relaxation. I like that. I think that is so true. You rehearse. And I think one of the dangers comes that we think, oh, I know that. No need to rehearse. It's a lazy, deceptive, and pernicious thought that comes to our minds that says, you're okay. Don't worry about it. I remember in high school, I was in drama. And I had a wonderful drama teacher, Mrs. Alden, and she helped me enormously, and the rest of us too. We would think, oh, we got it down. We know exactly what to do. We said, no, no, we are going to do what they call a dress rehearsal. We'd go through it, and sure enough, in act two, we would forget the hammer that we thought we had and didn't have and really needed that. And the, the gun for the dirty deed was not there in act five or you know, whatever it was. By doing the dress rehearsal, we went, oh, 
oh my goodness, we didn't have that. Write it down, make sure we've got that hammer there for the second set or whatever. So I firmly agree with you on that. That dress rehearsal is critical. And using those important, matter of fact, one of the things, I'd be kind of curious how you do this. When I'm doing it, I have, here we are in my office. One of the things that I have is little notes like this, real simple. And these are the solid, get these at the dollar store for guess how much? One dollar. And I use that to write all kinds of notes on there. And if I'm going to say something, I don't like to use a teleprompter. I know some people do and use it and they're very good. I find inevitably though, when I have a teleprompter, I kind of tend to read it like this and it sounds like I am reading from a teleprompter and it just happens to me. I find though, if I take these notes like this and I'll write down the bullet points, talk yes. about the, the blue widget and then the green goo goo diggy and the uh, yellow whippity doo doo or whatever. And I'll just take those and then use some old Mr. Scotch tape. You remember Mr. Scotch yes, tape? Yes, I and like and I tape it Scotch right tape. there. So I'm even telling you the inside stuff of how I do all this. Put it right there on my camera. So that way I can see it kind of from back here, but it's also uh, just tell, talk about the blue widget. And now I can look in the camera and talk about the blue widget. Is that, how do you do it, Patricia, and the work that you're doing? Well, my handwriting is appalling, so I usually type up, you know, I, I type them up and print them out and do it. But this is a perfect example, Terry, of how even using technology, the most low tech of paper and, and, and sticky tape is a perfect example to combine high tech with absolutely non-tech. It it's all about making you comfortable so that you can focus on the people who are ultimately going to listen. Yeah, I like that. You keep focusing on that. And it's something I appreciate about your work through the years, that you're focused on the person who is there in the audience, however that audience is defined. Tell us how we can keep our eyes on the person who's in the audience and the person that we want to energize and help or make laugh or cry or give them instruction information. What are some good ways to keep that always in our mind? If what does not work virtually is eye contact with an audience. When you're in person, the general rule, let's start with a boardroom setting or a small group. Look at individuals for a thought, an idea, or a phrase. And many of the sales teams I work with, if the economic buyer is at the end of the boardroom table, they give most of their attention to that person. I say, well, if it's a high-level meeting, the other individuals wouldn't be there. They might not be the decision makers, but they're influencers. You need to give attention to everybody, even if you deliver your opening and your closing line to the economic buyer. So make sure, ignore old-fashioned uh, advice, imagine them naked, don't do that, don't look over the top of their heads, don't scan all the audience, you can do it once or twice. And what's very important, if you make a dramatic point and you pause, and this is what I learned from Michael Grinder, so let's imagine you're giving more of a formal presentation, you you deliver a statement and maybe you've got your hands in a certain way freeze the gesture and then you can make eye contact imagine this is an audience you can make eye contact around the room with the gesture frozen and That's Michael brilliant. Rinder, I met at NSA and I invited him to conduct a seminar with me. He's the country's expert on nonverbal communications. And after I, I heard this from him, I went back and I looked at some of my, my clips when I was more of a keynote speaker, the great stories I was telling that I put on YouTube or on my website. And 90% of the time, I did it. But in sessions, in speaking schools, I'll often say, now, let me just, I'll deliver a great line and I'll freeze the gesture and then I'll deliver the line and drop my hands. And everyone always sees when it's that dramatic. It's almost as if, as if you take the power out of what you're saying. And as counterintuitive as it appears to be, in the silence, that's when you connect more to your audience because they have a moment 
to digest and reflect on what they just heard. Absolutely brilliant. I can see you standing on stage in front of a group of people delivering that. And uh, I think I might have some time that's where we're going, wow, and the, the jaws are dropping. We're going, that is profound. What could we do on video here using that kind of principle that would be slightly different than what we would do when we're standing in front of a group physically? Speak in shorter sentences or phrases. And remember the principle I learned from my friend Kay, who is an acting coach. She said, Fripp, words are $10 each. You got $30 for the sentence. Now, most people say, well, Patricia, but sentences have more than three words. That's the point. Not every word is of equal importance. And how an actor interprets a line is where they put the emphasis. So just take one line. General Eisenhower said, leadership is the ability to decide what has to be done and then get people to want to do it. So if you take one line and you underline what are the $10 words and with rehearsal, you exaggerate just to get it in your body. So in real life, when you're in the boardroom or you're, you're with a client or you're standing in, in front of an audience, it is so built in the muscle memory that the emphasis will come out. It's our job to help the audience understand one of the key ideas or philosophies. So if you take one, there's the concept of shorter sentences, or at least think verbal punctuation. If what we were saying was written, where would there be a comma? Period. End paragraph. Obviously, each pause is going to be a tiny bit longer. And if this was a note you were sending me, Terry, and you put an underline and an exclamation mark, it, it, it makes perfect sense that you would deliver that line with more energy. So think of verb shorter sentences because people can't reread. If you're reading an article or a book, it's very easy to reread what you just read. And, and if the written word, and you'll remember Ron Arden, the great speech coach who's no longer with us, but he came from a theatrical background. And he said, Fripp, the written word is for the I. The spoken word is for the rhythm. And so is, and it's, I would relate the difference if we had what I would call a real author having a, a book signing at a bookstore they would read segments of their book. If you went to see one of our National Speakers Association friends, who's primarily a speaker who writes a book, they more likely are going to tell you stories from the book or the story of what was the moment that they decided or the client said, Terry, you've got to write a book on this. Mm-hmm. So it, it is a slightly different format between writing and speaking, which is why in, in corporate world, you're going to give me a big 56-page report. Give me a one-page executive overview. That's going to get read. The 56 pages are just to cover your rear end. Yeah, very, very important. Well, you uh, help us a lot in that. Now, I want to go into another area here that you know a lot about and have helped many people with, and that is the importance of spaced repetition in learning. We often think, gee, I want to go to one conference one time and get it all. I know that often people will learn something better when they have spaced repetition over a period of time. And today, we're seeing a lot of that offered through online courses, online programs, where someone gets involved in a program and they learn over a period of time. Tell us the benefits of that and how that can work. And particularly, I know you're offering a program like that, how that can help and benefit people in business. We had a speaker at the National Speakers Association in Northern California, and their expertise was the very latest brain research. And she said, we are lucky if an average audience member will listen, will remember 10% of what they heard in our presentation five days later, 10%. Mm. 
And when you realize how both of us, Terry, and all our colleagues in the National Speaker Association were, spend years developing their expertise, and people come to the seminars, listen to the very various recordings, and it makes perfect sense when they listen to it. However, with presentation skills, it's easy to say, I know you understand this. Can you take it the stage every time? And with corporate America, all right, so you're investing big bucks in training your salespeople. Don't assume that they're going to remember all the techniques, even though they're the wildly excited. So online training has become a lot, well, very, I would say, in demand, as well as many speakers are doing it, because my clients are saying, Fripp, we're too busy to take people to conferences all the time. You know, we need them to learn, and part of it has to be on their own time. So the way you learn, Terry, is repetition and reinforcement. Yes. And yes, my, my online program, Fripp VT, which stands for Fripp Virtual Training on Presentation Skills, it, it's and, and again, what is different than what might have been offered 10 years ago is is our audiences, especially younger people, they're not just going to watch a half-hour video of one of our presentations. They want to get involved. So with Fripp VT, we we'll give them information for a few minutes, then say, let's see if you've been paying your attention. So they can't have it on while they're doing their email. And we all know, we all done emails when something's happening over here. You have to engage. You have to answer the questions. You're actively involved. But repetition, reinforcement, everyone's busy. So I, the expectations I set up with my corporate clients is you can take a whole course. What I'd rather you do is be committed to take at least one chapter, which might be five or ten minutes, once or twice a week, because it's building the layers. And suddenly you realize, wow, well, I know this. I, but not as I know it, I'm doing this. I'm implementing the ideas into my everyday communications. Yes, that is so important because when you think about what's happening today is we have often fewer resources for a training to put someone's body in another place with the airfare, the lodging, all the costs of that that's associated with it. But yet there's an increased demand in knowing these skills. So the importance of delivering through a video, through con connections that we have with computers are going to be very important. And now is a perfect time. It's like we're seeing all these come together for good. And that's why I like the courses, the online courses that are out there right now. And of course, we're not going to let you get away without telling us a little bit about, I'm going to reach through here and twist your arm just a little bit. Now you oh, tell yeah. us a little bit about Fripp VT, and someone says, hey, I want to do that. And by the way, for those of you that are watching this, think about it. You might be a thought leader, a speaker, an author, a coach, working with people, whatever you're doing in business, you need to continually increase your knowledge skills. One of the most important areas is communication, knowing how to present yourself, whether you're in front of people, or you're online, or you're in some other form of communication, you need to know this. It's not an option if you want to get ahead. You've got to do it. And Fripp has a course that is put together. It's for a few coins. You can get the kind of training and knowledge you need at an expert world-class level. So I'm not going to let her get away without telling it about it. And I want you to pay attention to this. So tell us, Fripp, about uh, how someone could get involved with that and what kind of benefits they have from it. Well, Powerful Persuasive Presentations, which is the name of the interactive web-based virtual training, covers all aspects of presentations, whether it's sales presentations, structuring your presentation, delivering an effective webinar, reporting to senior management without being terrified, or leadership presentations. And it might interest you to know that my largest client, who has more registrations and plans to roll this out worldwide, all their salespeople are internal. And even though of course, mine is the, de the design of the presentation is for actually looking at people, whatever the size of the audience. But what they're finding, because what I do is I give them the words to say, understanding the concepts of connecting and getting to a good start or how you can drive your, your demonstration or presentation faster with specific examples and stories. So I would recommend anyone who's interested in upping their game with presentation skills, go to Fripp VT, which is Fripp Virtual Training, and take a free trial.
Then if you say, oh, this is good, you can see three different of our popular chapters, then just click join. And as a friend of Terry Brock, just use FRIP as a coupon code and you would get a 20% discount. Wow. Very and nice. Thank you. A very cost effective way to train. To put it into context, Terry, one year of FRIP VT, which, which covers all aspects of sales presentations and all in person presentation and virtual presentations would be less than one hour consulting with me on the phone or a format like this. Mm. And many of my clients who are going to have one-on-one, -on -one, and I do work with their companies, they they either start with the FRIP VT or they start with the in-person and, and reinforce it with the FRIP VT. So it goes hand-to-hand -hand or by itself. But I yes. guarantee there is nothing more effective. And I have... Success just this morning. A speaker I met at one of the NSA chapters who signed up said, I just had an event and I, I have never had luck selling my $345 package. And this was the best ever. And it was all techniques I learned in superstar sales presentations. That, and he said, I haven't even finished the course. We can't <laughs> believe it possible. Excellent. And you know, that's it. The proof is in the pudding. You get yeah. that information. Well, think about it. Those of you that are watching this on how you can take the principles that we've cited. This is a video you want to go back over and review, be able to understand the concepts, the principles. It will make or break your career if you apply these properly. Before we let you go, Fripp, any final words that you want to say about communication, where we are today, and success in business? Well, I will repeat that it's not good presentation skills is not just a nice skill to have. It is a, a matter of business and career, life and death. If everything else is equal, if you are well educated, so is your associate. The one with the best presentation skills is going to get promoted. With sales teams, if your offering is, is close to your competitor, even if your price is higher, you will lose sales if you don't have the best presentation. I would just encourage everyone to take the free trial because learning is repetition and reinforcement. And although, Terry, I would never want them to forget me, FRIP, much more important, remember what FRIP stands for. Frequently reinforce ideas that are productive and profitable. I like it. Wonderful words of wisdom. Well, Patricia Fripp, thank you so much for joining us. It is an honor to have you on board and wishing you much continued success in the future. Thank you. And for those of you joining us, thank you for being here. Literally go back and review this. Seldom do new ideas stick after only one exposure. This is something you want to go back over, get your pen and paper or note taking device of choice out to peck away and go over this and think about ways that you can expand your mind and increase your business. I'm Terry Brock. Thank you very much for being with us today.